Hello, Mighty Family. Welcome back to another Dr. Eric Debunks. Ever feel confused when you get your blood work back? What do those red numbers mean? Should I be concerned? Today, we're going to debunk all of this from a primary care's perspective. I know it's not the easiest to get your doctor to sit down and go over it all with you. So let's dive in together today. So first is the complete blood cell count, also known as your CBC panel. What are doctors looking for and what makes us concerned? So my focus here is to really impart with you the big picture utility of these lab tests as they can get a bit granular. So first is a WBC or the white blood cell count. Elevated levels may indicate potential infection, inflammation, or possibly even malignancy. So for example, if someone is admitted for a severe pneumonia in the hospital, I would expect them to have an elevated white blood cell count. However, if I were to see a slightly elevated white blood cell count in the outpatient setting, I often would not jump to any conclusions and would just repeat the blood work first. The next lab value I'm looking for on the CBC is your hemoglobin. This is a protein found in your red blood cells, responsible for carrying oxygen in your blood. Your level of hemoglobin can determine if you're anemic or low on red blood cells. This can manifest in symptoms like fatigue, shortness of breath, or even pale skin. Causes of anemia can be due to a body's inability to produce more red blood cells due to nutritional deficiencies like iron, or it can be due to bleeding from a stomach ulcer or heavy menstrual cycles. All right, last thing on a CBC I'm looking for are the platelets, which are the cells in our body responsible for forming blood clots to stop bleeding or help with wound healing. Low platelets can also be due to nutritional deficiencies, infection, bone marrow disease, or even autoimmune diseases. So the take home message here is that a complete blood cell count can offer information to determine if someone has infection, inflammation, malignancy, if they're bleeding or has nutritional de uh, deficiencies. All right, now let's focus on the basic metabolic panel next. One crucial component of this test is looking at your electrolytes, in particular, your sodium and potassium levels. Numerous things can affect these two values, including diet, medication, and other diseases. In regards to sodium, we worry when we see patients with very low levels, as this can manifest in confusion, headaches, or even gait instability. And this is often due to severe dehydration, such as if a patient recently had severe food poisoning and has not been able to eat for a few days. As for potassium, this electrolyte can be particularly dangerous to your body when it's elevated because it can cause heart arrhythmias. Some common causes of elevated potassium can be due to poor kidney function, due to its inability to excrete the potassium, or caused by an adverse, adverse effect of numerous common blood pressure medications. In fact, oftentimes primary care doctors will check a BMP shortly after starting a new blood pressure medication just to make sure your electrolytes are stable. Another critical value I'm looking for is your creatinine level. So creatinine is the waste product created when creatine, an amino acid in your body, is broken down to provide energy to your muscles. So its utility is to act as a proxy for your kidney function. As you can imagine, if your kidney function is compromised, it will be less able to excrete these waste products, as a result, causing an elevated creatinine. There are numerous reasons for worsening kidney function, so once we see an elevated elevation in creatinine, it's imperative to investigate further. The last lab test I wanna debunk is the lipid panel. I know this one is the one that most patients dread and worry about. First and foremost, the two key values I'm focused on is your LDL and your triglycerides. We know both contribute to atherosclerotic events such as strokes and heart attacks. So you may be wondering, how do I lower them? Medications may be helpful under the discretion of your doctors, but it's important to understand what causes these lab values to be high. So research has shown that 75% of our LDL is produced by our bodies, while only about 25% is due to our dietary intake. So simply cutting out all the cholesterol and fat-containing foods is not the answer. In fact, so much more of the contribution is due to obesity, sedentary lifestyle, alcohol consumption, and excessive sugar and carbohydrate intake. So if you want to make a dent on your cholesterol and triglyceride levels, 
Those are the things to tackle first, rather than cutting out the healthy fats in your diet that are beneficial. In addition, losing five to 10% of your body weight can reduce your triglyceride levels by 25%. All right, Mighty Family, I hope now you feel empowered to go through your blood work as well as have a better understanding of what they mean. And definitely follow up with anything you find concerning with your doctors. As always, I look forward to connecting with you all again soon. For those that are not part of our Mighty Family just yet, check us out at MightyHealth.com for more. We're striving every day to be the modern holistic home for healthy aging. Thank you.